this year in Davos, very different. Chinese President Xi Jinping gave a very exciting speech. Everyone here was excited about that. Help us to understand how much do you think you would be able to relate to some of the key points President Xi mentioned in his speech. Uh, President Xi's speech comes at a perfect timing when globalization is facing great threats. He's been wise to choose the occasion to express his view on the issue. From President Xi's speech, I felt China's responsibility to the world. Figures of investments and imports in the past five years have spoken for China's contribution to the world. He also made an outlook to China's future. In the next five years, China will import goods worth over 8 trillion U.S. dollars. Many business leaders from other countries responded positively to the speech. In, to what extent do you think reform and open up is likely to help with Wanda, which is one of the very impressive Chinese companies going global? Wanda's plan on globalization has been going on for four years. Now the profit rate of our overseas investment has reached 20 percent, and our goal in 2020 is 30 percent, which is a mark for multinational companies. I can feel that with China's influence growing, Chinese investment overseas has become more and more popular. There used to be much doubt about our investment ability, but now it's different. Huge changes of attitude coming from everywhere. Even here in Davos, things are different. Now the accommodation for Chinese businessmen has been much better than before. And in the past, we were only invited as part of the audience, but now we are encouraged to speak. I feel that in the past, China needed Davos, but now Davos needs China. How are you going to face the possibility, let's just say, ever-rising protectionism from different parts of the world? Particularly, you heard the rhetorics coming from the United States. We are taking less pressure than the manufacturing industry. One thing about investing in the service industry is that we keep or increase jobs with locals. Wanda has bought over 10 overseas companies without sending any Chinese staff. So compared to manufacturing, where exporting goods will definitely squeeze jobs from importing countries, investing in the service industry does not involve too much pressure. Most countries welcome investments in the service industry, but for Rwanda, we recently have come across concerns from some U.S. senators. They are worried that China's rising influence may affect the objectivity of their movie industry. What do you think should be the biggest advantages that business person have when it comes to qualities over the others? Uh, I've been asked about my views about Donald Trump's presidency. He has been the only businessman turned U.S. president among all 45 of them. We don't need to hurry to make a conclusion. One of the best traits of businessmen around the world is that they compromise. During business negotiations, if one side completely dominates the whole talk, no deal can be made. It will be the game of two or more players, and they have to compromise with each other. So I think Mr. Trump will focus more on realistic benefits, while politicians tend to sacrifice interests for value. Well, if you had the time and the opportunity to meet with Mr. Trump, at the time probably he's already becoming the U.S. president, is there any message you would like to specifically talk to him about? We'll have to wait and see whether Mr. Trump will do what he said during his election campaign. If he would, we have to make an effort together. On the other hand, China should have some confidence and be prepared for a trade war if it really happens. When I meet him in the future, cooperation brings a win-win situation. Sanctions and protectionism hurt both countries. I noticed that your approach to the issue apparently different from, let's just say, Jack Ma. Uh, Jack Ma went to the United States, talked to Mr. Trump, promised to create a million jobs uh, uh, in America. But uh, uh, you seem to react in a very different way. Would you like to explain? 
I think the two of us are expressing the same thing. Mr. Ma said something about a million jobs in the U.S., and I said we'd protect you as jobs with our investment. We are both pointing out that China and the U.S. are relying on each other, so measures meant to hurt China may eventually hurt the U.S. Talking about Wanda, one issue people are extremely in, how is it possible that you have transformed your business from a, mainly a real estate developer into so much into culture investment, sports as well, and many other areas. Xi Jinping, the president of China, was also talking about transformation of the Chinese economy. It seems that Wanda has already got your experiment there. There are two things about transformation. The first is determination. Many companies get used to doing things they are familiar with and find it hard to change. The second thing is direction. Where are we going? Wrong directions can even lead to an end. Wanda has been determined to change. We caught 60 billion property revenue last year when real estate in China was at its peak. That's unimaginable. So revenue from the service industry overtook that from real estate. We bet on entertainment, sports and culture instead of export or manufacturing, which have been troubled by overcapacity. But after the transformation in the culture and sports sector, many say, well, it seems that uh, President Wang just uh, have a lot of cash to throw around. You can use big cash to buy all the sports clubs and football clubs uh, and also buy uh, Hollywood conglomerates. Uh, but is that really the way for Chinese businesses to become global? First of all, purchasing itself tests our ability. You have to buy the right thing at the right price. We made purchases in entertainment, sports and travel industries. We bought AMC and now the return has reached over 400%. Most companies were unprofitable the moment we bought them, otherwise they won't sell it. But we focused on their future. And the second thing is management. Wanda has been successful in terms of running these companies. AMC has been losing money for eight years before we bought it. And the next year after the purchase, it started to turn in profits and got listed in the market. It's been magic. Now its share price has doubled than the listed price. And we bought Hoyts in Australia, lost money for years, and last year it started to earn. Net profit has surpassed our goal by 30 percent. Unbelievable. And the core issue is the ownership of the company. Don't believe all foreign companies have owners. Most of them are controlled by managers. They have no long-term goals and no incentive mechanism, and we use basic ideas and management, which is incentive policy, and it brings benefit. Your son is the next generation of also Chinese business leaders. Any aspirations you have for him? Future entrepreneurs in China must have an executive force. Many of them have dreams but lack the ability to actually do things. Making their dream come true relies on their executive forces.